Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be a discussion surrounding the biggest mistakes new players make in humankind. Part 2 of this video is going to be going through situations and putting into practice everything we've discussed, describing and explaining the logic as we go. Not only have I sunk more than 100 hours into this game since its release, and I know I got some flack about that in other videos, so here's the proof, but I've also watched a ton of this game. The biggest mistake I see a lot of people make is trying to speed through the Neolithic era without making key strategic decisions that'll help snowball you for the rest of the game. This video assumes you've played a bit already. You've made those I have the high ground references. You've named your city something incredibly hilarious. But now it's time for a discussion allowing you to learn those little mechanics that not every player does, which will propel your game to the next level. Honestly, we can't really have a discussion about the Neolithic era without first discussing super briefly the era stars. I'm going to go over these super quickly because I know you're already familiar with them. The way to get out of the Neolithic era is to earn at least one star. You can do that by earning a population of five, finding 10 science through discoveries, or killing five animal units. Now, it should be noted there's a little bit of controversy in the community. Some people will make the argument that it's worth it to stay behind in the Neolithic era and grab those extra two stars for 20 fame apiece. In my opinion, you should never do this. This static 20 fame is not a worthwhile investment in the long run. The only factors that should affect your decision to stay in the Neolithic era are additional units in the form of hunter-gatherer groups. These can later be turned into population. Or the Neolithic legacy trait that's achieved by finding science discoveries. We'll talk about it a little bit more in depth later, so stay tuned. Really quickly, my logic behind this recommendation is that the fame is a static 20 fame. In the long run, at the end game, this doesn't really make too big of a difference. But the investment you make up front to food, industry, science, this sets you up for exponential growth and will help snowball you the whole game. As soon as you spawn, the first thing you have to do is explore. It's key for three major reasons. Lifting the fog of war, finding wonders, and picking up those coveted curiosities. First off, lifting the fog of war. Now this one's critical and it has a lot of implications. The first being capital placement. Check out my channel for a future video strictly on outpost and capital placement. We're going to touch upon a few basics here today, but really we're just scratching the surface of the key considerations that need to be made. Outpost and city placement are meant to do three things. The first, deny territory to your enemies or acquire territory for yourself. The second, expand a city and improve and grow it or exploit resources. And the more on the map you have uncovered, the better you can make a decision about where to place your capital and where to place adjoining cities and more you're going to want to lock down as many early game luxury and strategic resources. Luxuries will help maintain stability and increase your gold income if you can find allies and trade with them. Strategics, on the other hand, are crucial for getting those early game units up. I guess the logic is speak softly and carry a big stick. Yeah, I guess so. I should hope you do more than guess, my friend. You're a captain of industry. For example, if you grab horses early as the Egyptians, you can almost immediately make your special unit and roll other early game sieves. You also have to consider the defensive position of your city. Do you want it on the lowlands, easy to attack, or do you want it on a hillside, making the enemy come uphill to attack you? It's also important to consider adjacency bonuses. Do you want to play as a specific sieve this game? What's your strategy going into it? Do you want to settle near mountains so you have bonuses as the Zhao? Or do you want to settle near a lot of farmland to see your science snowball as the Babylonians? A rule of thumb developed by some experts basically states that you want to settle on a minimum 6 and 6 tile. This gives you enough food to grow, but at the cost of 35 production for an outpost, it takes only 6 turns for an outpost to be created. All these little things factor into your decision making. Next, let's talk about wonders. Somebody say... Wonder. Granted, there's a little bit of RNG involved here, but it is worth investing some time into. If you're the first person to discover a natural wonder, 
you get 50 fame, and it's really not that hard. It's about effectively moving your scouts into the Falk of War. Specific wonders have other implications that could help you throughout the rest of the game, but there's a whole other video coming up about that on my channel. Just like in other 4X games, if you move your unit onto a mountain or cliffside, for example, the amount of fog of war that is lifted is way larger than if you were in a depression or a valley somewhere. The stress of my modern office has caused me to go into a depression. The final and most important things to talk about are curiosities. There's a food curiosity, which is displayed by a small icon, and a science discovery, which is displayed by a small atom icon. Curiosities spawn in the fog of war, and if you've left the fog of war and it's become a light gray, it could have respawned a new curiosity. The next thing I have to mention is that auto explorer is completely and utterly broken. If you hit that auto explorer button, your unit knows exactly where to run to get to the closest curiosity. Now, the developers have indicated this is going to be patched in the next update. Will it affect the AI also? We're not sure. Let's finish this off by talking about some curiosity subtopics that are absolutely critical to understand. Let's first deep dive into food. As you know, in order to grow your hunting party, you need at least 20 food. You can get food from the food curiosities that appear on the map, there are three potential food curiosities you can get. Wild berries. These give you five food. Yum yum. Nuts. These give you ten food. And I'm not even going to try and make a joke here. Freshwater harvest. These give you fifteen food. That's almost a new unit. You can also get food from fighting animals. In the Neolithic era, deers will get you five food and five influence. You can take on a deer with one unit, but you have to be super careful because you can lose the game if you only have one unit. So just be smart when picking your battles. Take the high ground, be defensive, and never instant resolve. Mammoths are stronger and a bit tricky. You'll need a group of at least two units to fight them at first. They'll get you 20 food and 20 influence. That's a completely free unit. Finally, ransacking lairs or sanctuaries is a great way for a free unit. It's of my personal opinion, you should always ransack these. You can do it in a strategic way, so it only takes one turn. You'll see here that I moved my unit off to grab the curiosity, but then I moved them right back to the sanctuary and ended its turn with 0-4 movement. I still hit the ransack button, meaning next turn, when this unit starts, there'll actually be two units there, each with four movement. Another thing to note about food and combining units is that if one unit has 15 and the other has 10 and you combine them together, you keep that extra 5 food and your unit spawned. If you're moving a unit away, the food will stay with a unit that's sedentary. In this case, I'm moving one unit away from two, and the food will stay with these two units, and this one unit on its own will have zero food. The next concept I want to discuss with you is absolutely revolutionary. I compare it to castling in chess. In fact, I want to dub this move potatoing because the first time I heard about it, I was watching a video by Potato McWhiskey. As soon as I moved this hunter group over the next food curiosity, pushing them over that 20 food limit and adding that extra hunting group, you'll notice that their movement is at zero of four because it took four moves to get to that food. However, if you select the newest hunting group, they still have full 4 of 4 movement available. This is incredibly useful, and good players leverage this each and every time. You need to develop this habit if you don't have it already. The last subtopic I want to discuss is science. Research and development. We're putting in the man hours to study the science of what you need. Last week, we put liquid paper on a bee, and it died. When you walk over the scientific curiosities, you'll notice you get five influence and one to three knowledge. Any knowledge you pick up in the Neolithic era will carry over to the ancient era as science. It'll contribute almost immediately to your tech tree and you may even get a free tech out of it. One of the biggest game changing things though, in my opinion, is the Neolithic legacy trait. When you achieve this, you'll automatically get a prompt. You have the option to select makers, which will give you plus one industry per population on a city or outpost. Farmers, which will give you plus one food, and storytellers, which will give you plus one science. Why is this important? Well, if you think about going into the ancient era, you might only start with two or three science. 
But if you can disband a few units in your city, maybe two or three, you gain that extra little population and you've doubled your science. That's incredible. I hope you've enjoyed this short discussion on what you need to do. It would be a huge help if you gave it a like and hit that subscribe button. You can even go ahead and look at for part two of this video. That's where we actually put into play everything we discussed today and we show you how to use these little tips and tricks in a situation. If you have any other trick, tips and tricks for the Neolithic era, feel free to comment down below and I will reply to each and every one.